All right, so test for independence of uh, two random variables, x and y. Uh, so you have the joint density function of x and y. And to test whether they are independent, we need to find the marginals fxx, which is fxy. You integrate out y. And you also find out fyy by integrating out x. And then you take this product and check whether uh, this relationship is uh, true or false. If this is true, then the random variables are independent. So if this, uh, so if the product of this uh, does not agree with the given joint density function, then the two random variables are not independent. Uh, so if this is true, then x and y are independent. Alright, so let's check this on uh, uh, this uh, example. So here is an example. The joint density function is given to be k x squared y when x and y belongs to this triangular shaded region. And uh, it is zero everywhere else. So the density function is zero everywhere else. It's only non-zero in this region. And of course, the density function is not a constant. It depends on x, uh, the x value and the y value. It's in this form. So notice that x goes from minus 1 to 1. y goes from 0 to 1. So if you want to find the uh, density function of x, uh, so X, X, X in this region, it is governed by this region. And this is a line whose equation is X plus Y equal to 1. Because when X is 0, Y is 1. And when Y is 0, X is 1. So this is the, similarly here, when X is 0, Y is 1. And when Y is 0, X is minus 1. So this is Y minus X equal to 1. Because when Y is 0, X is minus 1. And when x is 0, y is 1. So we have both the equations. Uh, so fxx has two portions because for x, x in this region, x between 0 and 1, and x between minus 1 and, uh, z and uh, 0. Uh, so in, the, in this region where x is positive, it's between 0 and 1. We integrate out uh, y, but y goes between these two limits from 0 to y, 1 minus x. And similarly here, it is here. So here again, joint density function of x comma y dy, y goes from 0 to 1 plus x. And uh, so now if I substitute, so we can find the k later. So uh, x squared y dy. And this is k. So integration is with respect to y. So even x squared goes outside. So it's simply y dy. So this x squared also goes here. And the limits are 0 to 1 minus x. And here 0 to 1 plus x. So this is y squared by 2, so the integral is going to be k by 2 x squared, y squared the top limit is 1 minus x the whole squared, here it is k by 2 because y squared by 2, top limit minus bottom limit, bottom limit is 0, so the answer is x squared multiplied by 1 plus x the whole squared, x between, uh, this is from 0 to 1 and this is from minus 1 to 0. So we can find the k by, if at this stage if you are interested, we can find the k by uh, simply finding the density function of area under the x should be 1. So if you plot this, notice that when x is uh, minus 1, this is 0. And when x is 0, the density function is 0. And when x is 1, the density function is 0. Between it has a cubic shape. 
So this is positive, this is positive, everything is positive. So the function is something like this. So this is the way fxx uh, looks like. From minus 1 to 1. And uh, you can actually find the maximum value if you want by uh, differentiating and equating it to 0, etc. Now, so to find out fyy, we do the same stuff. So fyy would be. So notice that y goes between 0 and 1. So if you take any particular value of y, you can see the limits on x. So here we need to integrate out x. Uh, so x goes from y minus 1 or 1 minus y. And, uh, I, and the upper limit is going to be 1 minus y. So this is k x squared dx from minus 1 minus y to 1 minus y. I pulled out the y outside because the integration is with respect to x. So if you do this, this is going to be x cubed by 3. Um, um, you have y here, x cubed minus 1 minus y, 1 minus y. So this limit is the negative of this, so this will come out as 2. So this is 2k by 3 of y multiplied by 1 minus y cubed. y between 0 and 1. So if you plot this, what is y equal to 0? Y equal, so the density function is something like this. Both at 0 and 1, it's 0. This is f y y. And this area is 1. So we can use that area to find out f, uh, k finally. So area under f y, this is the easiest here. So that's 2k by 3, integral 0 to 1, y multiplied by 1 minus y cubed y. Because of the cube here, let me make a change of variable. I'm going to call z to be 1 minus y. So this is uh, 2k by 3 integral. Notice that uh, dz is minus dy. And when y is 0, z is 1. When y is 1, the limits are from 1 to 0. But with the minus, it will flip back to 0 to 1. So 1 minus z cubed is z cubed. And y is going to be 1 minus z. So multiplied by 1 minus z dz. So it's easier to integrate now. So the area under fyy is now 2k by 3. So z cubed minus z4. So that's z4 by 4 z4 by 4 minus z5 by 5, 0 to 1. So that's 2k by 3, 1 over 4 minus 1 over 5. That's 2k by 3, 1 over 20. So this is equal to 1. So that gives k to be 30. All right, so we have k is 30. So if I substitute k equal to 30, this simply becomes uh, 20. And uh, similarly here, k is 30, so this is simply becomes uh, 15. That's the uh, right density function for x and y. And so the, here the k is 30, 3, 0. We can also check uh, if you want to make sure the k is correct. Now, if you integrate this from 0 to 1 and minus 1 to 1, this should turn out to be also 1. All right, now you notice that if I actually, in this case, fx, fxx is this function, fyy is this function. So clearly, in this case, this inequality is not satisfied. So we conclude that in this particular problem, the two random variables are, indip uh, are not independent. 
but uh, so they are clearly not independent but it's but so next thing we could do is we could try to find out what is the correlation between these two random variables what is the correlation coefficient remember correlation is covariance divided by sigma x sigma y so covariance is expected value of x y minus expected value of x expected value of y sigma x sigma y so to compute this correlation you need to compute all these uh, five quantities so these four of them are easy because you can use the marginals to find out the mean etc so to compute this quantity you do need the to compute this quantity you need the uh, you need the marginal density function so let's just compute the expected value of x here uh, so this is going to be we have the density function here so expected value of x is x fx x dx just to illustrate minus 1 to 1 but this has to be done in two integrals because the density function has different shape in each region 0 to 1 x fx x dx so this is going to be minus 1 to 0 x the density function when uh, x is from minus 1 to 0 is given by this term so 15 goes outside 15 is common in fact so that's going to be x squared multiplied by this quantity so there is already an x here so this is x cubed multiplied by 1 plus x dx and from 0 to 1 it's x multiplied by this quantity so that's x cubed multiplied by 1 minus x dx now if you remember each integral can be computed separately so let me make a change of variable y equal to minus or x equal to minus y so notice that we can this integral now will become when x is 0 y is 0 when x is minus 1 y is 1 so the limits goes from 1 to 0 but dx is minus dy so the limits will flip back so this is dy here now because I have taken the dx is minus dy minus I used to flip it back x cubed is minus y cubed and this becomes 1 minus y but notice that this term is exactly the same as this with the negative sign because at this point this y is a if you compute this that's exactly looked like this because here you have the variable cubed 1 minus uh, variable dx variable cubed 1 minus variable dy or dx 0 to 1 the same limit so the, the, this term cancels the other one and the expected value is 0 so this term is 0 in this case interestingly so we don't even need to compute this so let's compute and uh, this and see so expected value of x y so this is once again double integral x y joint density function of x y dx dy so if you look at that problem y goes between 0 and 1 and for a particular value of y for a particular value of y x goes from uh, x goes from we went through this right minus of here minus x goes from minus 1 minus y to 1 plus y so this is minus 1 minus y to 1 plus y 1 minus y minus 1 minus y is the same limits right and uh, this is given to be 15 now 
k is 30, so that's uh, 30 x squared y. So the limits are 0 to 1, minus uh, 1 minus y to 1 minus y. Uh, so 30 I'm going to pull outside. Uh, this integration is with respect to x. So y term, all the y terms goes outside. So you have a y here, you have a y, so that's y squared. x here, x squared, so that's uh, x cubed dx. But notice that when you do this integration, this is x4 by 4. And when you put minus 1 minus y and 1 minus y, see this limit is the opposite of this. So top limit minus bottom limit will be 0. So this term goes to 0. So we don't even need to complete the rest of the uh, integration. Because this is 1 minus y to the power 4 minus 1 minus y to the power 4. So that's 0. So this term also is 0. So in this case, this is also 0. So we come to the conclusion that the correlation coefficient is 0. So here is another example where x and y are not independent. Uh, but, on, but they are uncorrelated. Uh, random variables. So it's, it's, uh, you need to go through these computations uh, to figure out uh, what, so in this case we got lucky. Suppose these quantities were not zero, then you will have to compute these three terms. You have to also compute these terms and then numerically see what the, but if any one of the mean is zero and this expected value of xy is zero, so the numerator is zero and the denominator is being a finite quantity, actual value is irrelevant to come to this conclusion. So once again, we have two, we have a specific example where the two random variables are not independent, but nevertheless, uh, the so-called correlation coefficient using uh, uh, is zero. So as a result, they are uncorrelated random variables.